Good evening and welcome. Um, and uh, I'd like to begin uh, with something appropriate just to uh, start the Shi'ur and introduce it. Um, beautiful rendition of Avina Malkainu, courtesy of, of Avram Fried, accompanied by a choir and an orchestra. Sorry, I was not planning to uh, let that play out all four minutes of it, but I was absolutely totally mesmerized. I think it's a, it's a beautifully haunting melody and absolutely captures the, the essence of, of the days are lying ahead of us and, and kind of sets the tone. For what I want to share with you, I think we, we automatically, you know, associate the high holidays with Avinu Malkain and Rosh Hashanah, um, and for good reason, because that prayer of Avinu Malkain really encapsulates um, the, the essence of what the Yom and the days ahead of us are. 
in, in that due relationship we have with Hashem, which is Avinu Malkeinu. So let's begin with where this comes from. Where is the source of this um, very, very beautiful prayer that we intone Rosh Hashanah uh, twice uh, on, on each day, uh, and then during the uh, Aseret Yimei Tshuva and between Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, uh, also twice a day on Yom Kippur, the conclusion of every one of the services of Yom Kippur. What, what's the source? Um, it's actually um, the Talmud in a tractate. Where is it hiding? The tractate in Talmud... Um, Ta'anit. Um, here we go. Um, Talmud uh, in Ta'anit. Uh, Ta'anit deals with um, situations of droughts and fasts. Um, and when there's a lengthy drought, um, what usually used to happen is that um, they, they called for a, a public fast there and the community got together in the town square um, and there they, uh, they prayed together. And so the Talmud relates at the end, very end of the third chapter of um, this tractate, the Talmud Tanit, that Rabbi Eliezer led the community in prayer. This was a fast day. They were praying for rain. And there's a special amida for fast days, not the one that we normally say, uh, but an expanded one. So if Amid has 18 blessings and more recently uh, 19 blessings, there's a 24 blessing amida with special additions for prayers for, for Hashem to answer us in, in times of extreme need. But it, it seems his prayers were to no avail. Then we have a Rekiva stands up um, and he leads the community uh, with a short prayer. Our father, our king, Abinam al We have no other king other than you, our father and king. For your sake, have mercy upon us. So re-establishing uh, a unique relationship with Hashem and uh, the fact that we, 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 we want Hashem to have mercy upon us for, for His sake. Because in a sense, you know, when Hashem tests the Jewish people and we suffer, that is almost a challenge to our relationship with Hashem and the nations of the world look around, like Mashur Rabbeinu said way, way in the beginning of our history, Lama Yamura going, why would the, the Goyim say? What would the nations of the world say? God's abandoned, God's forsaken the Jews. So almost like it's a chidl Hashem, so to speak. You, 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 you're doing bad to your own reputation, that mercy your past. That was effective. Rain started to fall. Um, and then um, the, the, the um, Talmud, a divine voice, clarifies um, that it's you know, a special merit Rabbi Akiva has um, that actually made it that his prayer was answered and not that of Rabbi Eliezer, but that's just beyond what we're discussing. So we can see the amazingly powerful effect of praying with that introduction, Avinu Malkeinu. And uh, I just wanted to share with you part of the, the, the Hebrew text of that uh, Gemara, uh, because you will recognize there, um, there it is, you'll recognize there, the words from, from Avina Malkeinu prayer. Um, where is it? It's gone into hiding. There it is. Um, no. No. It is missing from my PowerPoint. I apologize. So what is it about praying with that formula Avina Malkeinu? Of course, the original prayer of Rabbi Akiva has been expanded upon. It's now much longer uh, than uh, the original uh, short prayer. The Talmud quotes two lines, um, but everywhere where I've seen the story quoted, uh, it says that he had a five-line prayer. So I'm not quite sure uh, what the other three verses were that are not listed in the Gemara in, in Tanit. Avinu Malkeinu represents our relationship with Hashem at the deepest sense. A father and a king. And again, this is a, a relationship that is also echoed in the prayer we say on Rosh Hashanah after we blow Shafer. Every time we blow Shafer, we immediately talk about Hayom Harat Olam, that this is the, the day the world came into being. Um, so interesting, because today, 25th of Elul is actually the anniversary of the one of creation, and Rosh Hashanah, which is on Monday, will be day six of creation. That's the 
day that man was created. Um, and that is when one can talk about a relationship with God, because until there were humans in the world, there wasn't really a relationship with Hashem, because um, beyond humans, uh, lesser creatures do not uh, appreciate a relationship with a supreme being. And, and that's what we refer to. The, the sixth day of creation, Rosh Hashanah, as the day the world came into being fully. And, and because of that, he makes stand in judgment all the creations of the world were children, servants, um, so either as banim or avadim. Im kebanim, im kebanim. Either whether as children or as servants. Im kebanim, if it is as children, then have compassion upon us as a father has compassion on our children. Im kebanim, if uh, black servants, uh, then, well, we, our eyes are fixed upon you and, and please favor us and, and be kind to us and, and bring forward a judgment in, in a positive way. So we have that due relationship with Hashem where we relate to him either or as his children or as his servants. Because at the same time, we have that unique relationship that the father has with the son. At the same time, we also have the... Um, recognition that he's God and we're his subjects and he's that complete ultimate control and you know either way we asking Hashem to, to hear our prayers uh, in both those realms a story parable there was a father who had a bunch of naughty kids and he used to get into serious trouble at school um, and, and he couldn't keep a teacher for them and he, he kind of went from hiring one tutor to another and it just never worked uh, he didn't work well. Eventually, the father realized he had no choice, that if he wanted his children to be educated, he would have to, rather than delegate the task, take it upon himself. So father now becomes teacher as well. And um, But the children haven't changed their nature. They're still a bunch of uh, boys, those are usually the ones that misbehave, who misbehave just as badly as they did when they were at school and then with private tutors. Um, and the father has to punish them. And now the kids come crying to him. And they say, Dad, this, this is not working. You know, up until now, we used to get punishments from the headmaster or our tutors. And then we used to come crying to you and you used to plead our cause. Um, and then um, somehow you got a leniency. You, you, we got relief. But now you want the same. This is not working. You know, you punish us. And then where do we go for, for an appeal? How will the father, who is also our teacher, be able to in any way you know, get reprieve from our service? So, dad, remember one thing. You were our father before you were our teacher. And just bear that in mind. So even if when you teach us, sometimes you act harshly, we can still go to our father. And he was our father first. And, and, and that's Avinu Malkainu, of course. Rosh Hashanah is about crowning. Um, Hashem as the master, the king of the universe, and, and, and that makes us be there as his subject that are being judged, as we say in the um, talk of prayer, we, we kind of, you know, walking past him one by one in single line, and God looks at us and, and analyzes our, our actions and, and rules. Uh, and sometimes if it's based on actions, then the ruling is not going to be as favorable uh, as we would like it to be. However, Hashem Avinu, there's also that relationship of a father and his children. Um, as we, we told in the Torah, Banim Atem Hashem, you are Hashem's children, you are Hashem's sons. And that is a relationship which, which supersedes almost the kingship. So we say, Avinu Malkeinu, there is both, but remember, which one is the first one? And clearly, it's a very powerful formula. Uh, which one, which, as I, I read to you earlier from the Gemara, we Akiva devised, um, and uh, it opened literally the gates of heaven as, as, as the rain came, came down. By the way, for you know, those who don't know, we were in Johannesburg, we had our first rains today. Uh, so that was quite beautiful. I don't think there was much. I was in the East Rand, there was quite a, a, a downpour uh, this morning. So Baruch Hashem, the Broch is coming down, uh, the gates of heaven opened, and Avinu Malkeinu, Rabbi Akiva Tutus, has that power. It is um, a formula for calling out to Hashem and formulating our personal needs. And most of Avinu Malkeinu is about 
uh, requests. I mean, it really became a very powerful prayer um, when we read over the past few years, Menam from Menachalatecha, Hashem, please keep plague away from us. And, and with 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 the said that I've been the Malkino for, for years and years and years, and I thought of it as kind of quaint historical stuff, you know, plagues, and suddenly um, an epidemic uh, was kind of staring at us uh, in the face. And, and when we said, send us healing and remove Magefa, it, it really resonated and penetrated. It, it's for that reason, because it's a prayer about personal needs, that it's omitted on Shabbos, incidentally. So it's not said that Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is on Shabbos, uh, it's not said during the Shabbos of Aseretim Eitruva, the 10 days of penitence, uh, because we, we refrain on Shabbos from formulating personal needs. Uh, so the Amida um, is kind of truncated. We take all the middle blessings, we have three blessings of praise for Hashem, and we have three blessings of thanksgiving to Hashem at the end. In the middle, 13 blessings are all about personal or communal requests. So those are removed from the Shabbos Amida and replaced with one broker that deals with the sanctity of the day, because we don't want to get involved with personal requests, um, and that's why Avinu Malkeinu is actually omitted during that time. So Avinu Malkeinu, as I said, is said during a Aseretium Eitshuva. It's also said during on, on, on fast days, on public fast days throughout the year, just with some light, slight changes in, in the wording. Um, so this is this is the beginning of Avinu Malkeinu. Um, we've sinned before you. Um, you are only king, and Hashem deal with us kindly for the sake of your name. And I've developed all of of, of, of the above themes earlier on. But as you can see, uh, it's an Avinu Malkeinu. There, there's some. It, it is said on the ten days of penitence. It's also said on the public fast days. But some of the Avinu Malkeinus change slightly. So, for example, at the beginning of the year, during the Aseret Yom Eitshuva, 10 days of penitence, we're going to ask Hashem to renew us for a good year, whereas mid-year, during the fast days that occur, the four public fast days, we're going to, not, well, not really four public fast days, because some Gedalia falls out during the Aseret Yom Eitshuva, but the other three, we're going to say, bless us uh, with a good year, because we're now not at the beginning of the year. Uh, likewise, when we start talking about being inscribed in the book of uh, Chaim Tovim, or Gulav Yeshua, and there are another few, to be inscribed in the book of Good Life and to be inscribed in the book of Redemption, that is the formula for the, uh, you can see there's five of them, I've only put two on the screen, uh, that is the blessing, you, that's the request you make during the Aset, you make Shuvah, 10 days of penitence, but during uh, public fast day, it is changed to Zachrein. It was inscribed in the book, hope for the beginning of the year, we want to be remembered for a, a good life. Clearly, most famous of all is the final one. Now, here's something very surprising, and I actually was you know, looking at different machzerim earlier on, um, and I found a machzer that had it written in. I've heard of the custom before. It says, please say this in a whisper, in an undertone. Now we kind of, you know, that's the one that everyone does, even somebody who has had fashlof in the whole shul and hasn't said the Avinu Malkeinu uh, or the uh, previous Avinu Malkeinus uh, suddenly wakes up and joins the congregation as we all sing together, Avinu Malkeinu. Um, so why uh, would there be a custom to say this? softly. So I will share with you a uh, parable of the Dubna Dub Maggid, which will explain that. The Maggid of Dubna says the following. So this fellow comes into a shop, and he's busy ordering goods. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he wants so much of this and of that and of that, and they're busy packing up all the goods and getting them all ready. He's got his vehicle outside, and they're kind of all ready to... Uh, to load up, you know, he gets to the till, um, and he has to pay before they will obviously put it in. And he, you know, there's a few people ahead of him, and you can see this one, you know, paying with his black credit card, that one with his purple credit card. This one's putting down cash on the table. Um, finally, it's his turn, um, and he gets to the counter, and his voice changes from the loud voice in which he demonstratively ordered all the goods 
um, he suddenly goes into a whisper and he says to the owner of the shop, please, I actually, I'm going through a difficult time in my business. I don't have any money. Um, I don't have any credit facilities. Can you put that on the count? And as soon as I've sold the wares, I'll come back and pay you. Everything else was said in that loud voice. When we came to the very end uh, and it came to paying and he had to ask for credit, then his voice lowered. Says the Maggot of Dubna, that's really what's going on in this Avinu Malkainu here. Let me put it back for you on the screen um, and let's just um, understand what he's trying to tell us. Um, so um, after we made all our requests, we then kind of say to Hashem, um, this is why we want you to grant our requests. Do it for the sake, and do it for the sake, and do it for the sake. And we start to count all of our merits. And then suddenly you realize that maybe the merits that we have are insufficient. So what do we do? We walk up to Hashem and we say, God, maybe we don't deserve the requests for money and for good health and for sustenance and for protection everything we've asked for in a loud voice, maybe we don't deserve it. Hashem, please favor us. Because we actually don't have sufficient accomplishments. We don't have enough. Give it to us on credit. Do it for us. Deal with us charitably and kindly with us um, and deliver us. Um, so that, that's the, the source for why that last Avinu Malkinu would be said in an undertone rather than uh, very loudly. Um, so I'm going to end by playing you the traditional version of Avinu Malkinu. This is a, a version which was actually created two years ago, you may recall, you may have seen it then. Uh, two years ago, Rosh Hashanah uh, was, well, very different from uh, Mani Shtanda, very different from what we faced even a year ago. And definitely from the way we're coming to shul this year, Rosh Hashanah. In fact, two years ago, we were kind of cowering in fear. Um, corona was at its absolute, uh, you know, max. Um, and the shuls had just opened up under very, very difficult conditions. And people were very frightened. And then it chose to stay away from shul. And um, I won't go into the whole history of it, but you can, you, you can find that. There was an article in the Jewish report. But the Rabonim and the Chazonim of South Africa, and that in itself, uh, that, that, that joint effort of, of rabbis and chazanim uh, is in itself commendable, a get together. Um, and each of my own homes or shuls sang, and then courtesy of Johnny Byron, uh, this was all put together uh, for a very, very, very special version of Avinu Malkin. I'm going to play out with that. Uh, this is obviously our last year for 5782 Tafshin Pei Beit. So I want to wish you all a Ketiva Vachatima Tava and a good Yontav. Um, please, God, we see you on the other side of uh, the new year. Um, it's not going to happen on Wednesday. It's a fast day, so uh, we'll probably pass. Uh, the following Wednesday is um, a fast day again, uh, Yom Kippur. So I think we're going to see one another sometime later in October. Please uh, watch the usual channels to find when next year is going to be. There will be um, a reminder. Silver uh, Sumbatova and a good Yonta to all. And here it is. Okay.
May Hashem bless us all, our families, our community, our country and our world with health and with healing and with a good and sweet new year filled with abundant blessing. Thank you.